just yeah. from the neuroscience perspective, is there a clear dividing line between the conscious and the unconscious? Yeah, so, um, you know, I'm, I'm interested in sort of, first we have to operationalize it and like how do you, d definition is really important. And so, you know, the most we can say about what is consciousness, consciousness is first person subjective experience. You know, only I know about my own consciousness. I assume you are, but I don't, I don't know you are. And so it's this very um, subjective first person experience. So when you're doing things in a lab, like asking people, you basically have to ask people, did you see it or did right. you not see it? It's self-report. Um, uh, the unconscious is, you know, I think we put a lot of things into this big basket that we call the unconscious. You know, I'd like to maybe divide it into four different types. You have the unconscious is stuff that is happening, you know, in the room behind me that I just have no awareness of. You know, I'm unconscious of it, right? My brain isn't even processing that information. Then you have, you know, people who are unconscious when the sort of B battery power system of the brain is out. You know, these subcortical areas that kind of infuse the brain with neurotransmitters and make it be awake and, and alive. Um, when those things, when someone's in a coma or, you know, um, under anesthesia, those kinds, that level of unconscious is sort of a wakefulness. You're not really awake. Then you have the fully awake brain intact. Um, and then you have certain things that the brain is processing that it's not aware of. Um, versus things that it is aware of. And that's another type of unconscious. So things that are, you're fully awake, it's coming into your brain, it's being processed, you're just not having subjective yeah. awareness of it. And then of that, you have what we sort of call the cold unconscious, you know, did you see it versus did you not? And then the kind of more dynamic, warm unconscious, which is emotive and has to do with, you know, memories and repression and the yeah. rest of it. That's sort of the really juicy bit that psychoanalysis is involved with. So I think, you know, when you talk about the unconscious, it's not this one uniform thing. Um, but if you're talking about what is the brain processing that we're not aware of versus what it's processing that we are aware of, there are some distinctions we can start to make in terms of looking at um, brain function where we can sort of predict whether a person's going to have subjective experience of that information or it's going to be being processed in the brain outside of awareness. So, so partly what you're saying is there will always be certain brain functions that remain unconscious. They will never come to conscious awareness. There's a couple of theories, basically. Ultimately, we, once we have a full theory of the neural basis of consciousness, can we know whether something is conscious or not? There are a couple of theories. One says that you need to have feedback loops from prefrontal cortex yeah. or um, thalamo, thalamocortical loops, yeah. so basically going from subcortical information, going from the subcortical yeah, right. areas to the cortex and back, and that you need these reverberating loops to have conscious experience. And that so That's if right. you were to process something, let's say visually, unconsciously, you'd activate primary visual cortex. As it becomes more into your um, awareness, you start to activate higher level um, areas in the brain that process the information more sort of deeply or evaluate it more, and that comes into conscious experience. So it's not a place in the brain, it's a process, and it has to do with systems and networks.